Hey everyone. <clears throat> so I've been asked to make a quick video in regards to my experience with COVID. Uh, I'm going to be doing this in a multi-part series, but right now I'm going to start with actually something that's been working because apparently there's a lot of long haulers out there like myself and who have been going through the ringer and the fact that I've been finally getting some relief. I think it's worth quickly putting on video so others can, uh, take a look and think about it for themselves, potentially. Um, anyway, long story short, uh, spent a lot of time in the ICU back in uh, April, May, June, uh, due to COVID, almost didn't make it. Uh, ended up being a very interesting survival story, but still in tons of pain after the fact, and mysterious pain, it didn't even make sense. I was on so many different painkillers and we kept trying different painkillers and none of it was giving me relief. Uh, to the point that even at one point they were doubling up on the painkillers and I said guys this is making me dizzy but it's not doing anything for the pain at all. Uh, tried even gabapentin and that did nothing for the pain. Uh, tramadol, uh, Percocet, all the different stuff. The only thing that did work was in the uh, emergency room in the ICU was the morphine but that will knock almost anything out. Anyway so one of the things that I told them is that I experienced a lot of pain in my life but what was weird about this pain is that it was unlike any, any other pain I felt before, almost as if my body was screaming at me. And uh, I had some doctors look at me like, what does that mean? And I was like, I don't know what to tell you because I'm told them I, I've been punched in the face among so many other things that I've experienced in my life. And I said, this pain was so different uh, because even the pain of COVID itself where just breathing felt like I was inhaling fire, that was one of the most uh, uncomfortable and painful experiences of my life but this post COVID pain was different anyway um, never connected the dots because I was just in so much misery and just trying to make it day to day uh, that I didn't connect the dots to one of the doctors basically said my bone density went down but my plasma calcium levels were fine so uh, at a later point I started thinking about it some more one of the days where I was not on painkillers I was like hmm that's something interesting and I brought it up to my doctors and I'm like, hey, you know, uh, they kind of connected the dots and said that my bone density went down to like it's a natural part of the aging process. I was like, yeah, but my bone density was fine before all this COVID and all this stuff happening. Anyway, and one of the key things that we forgot and most people tend to forget is that everyone thinks of bones as basically the primary purpose of calcium in the body. And it's not actually one of the primary uh, purpose is to uh, Calcium storage, sure, yeah, but it's not to be the actual structural support specifically. At that point, your body will sacrifice your bones and basically increase osteoclast uh, activity to specifically bring calcium back into the bloodstream to keep your heart pumping. There's so many processes that are critical when it comes to uh, calcium. Now, the one of the doctors actually took what I was talking about and looked it up and ended up realizing that the viruses in general sequester a lot of calcium. So the fact that it had such a significant viral episode and is all of us just intertwining together so that that was three weeks ago when we decided we we're going to start doing an aggressive calcium therapy. Even though I take supplements, I eat a lot of kale, the percentage of calcium specifically is very low. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I wasn't getting 100% of my daily calcium intake. Now, the thing that gets even more fascinating with that is that you have to also take into account the absorption rates and absorption uh, amount. So even if you're taking 100% of your daily calcium intake, you're not necessarily getting that 100%. You're getting maybe 30% or 15%. So uh, at that point, we start an aggressive calcium uh, therapy, which is basically just me supplementing 100% of my calcium uh, intake three times a day. So I would start taking some calcium with vitamin D as well as, uh, can't remember something else. But anyway, within a week's time, my pain started to calm down. I would actually have one to two hours a day of no pain. And the pain kept steadily coming down to the point that now I have whole days sometimes that I'm able to be super productive, do a lot of work because I'm not in pain. There's something weird with COVID because I'm still having random episodic uh, nerve like misfiring. It just doesn't make any sense because out of nowhere, my nerves will go off and I'm in excruciating pain to a point I could barely move for hours sometimes. Uh, and, and we still don't understand 
why that's happening, the rhyme or reason behind it. But in general, I'm doing a lot better uh, after doing the aggressive calcium uh, supplementation. And that is just one of the most fascinating things ever. So I figured I'll quickly share that because you never know who that might help. Uh, or some people who are long haulers, they're suffering the way I am and the way they are. And it's just, it sucks. It really does. And to not, be ha to not have any answers and to go on as long as it has, it's just, it's also tiring emotionally. It's like you want to do what you want to do and then you can't. It's just one of the most frustrating things ever. Anyway, I wanted to quickly share that with you. I'll be talking more on uh, and uploading on my YouTube channel where I'll basically be discussing what COVID felt like because apparently a lot of people are not taking it seriously and they're just going out, they're getting infected. And I even had a friend last week and he's like, bro, I got infected with COVID and he said, I thought it was just like the uh, like another flu or something like that. And he's texting me almost every day about how he's dying. And then now all of a sudden he sent me messages like, man, you guys are so tough. I can't believe that you were actually in the hospital in the ICU. And I was just like, so apparently it's not real until it finally happens to somebody. So instead of empathizing or understanding some of the plights that people are uh, being faced with and just being a decent human being to each other. Like you don't have to experience everything to fully understand that somebody's suffering. Let's just be kind to them. Let's show love and support and simple things. Be human. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. And uh, this is the beginning of many more videos to come. Bye. And I hope, wait, wait, wait. And I hope all of you long haulers feel better too, because this has been one of the most frustrating experiences of my life and i'm sure that you guys are not having fun with it either anyway um speak soon bye